Hey guys, and welcome back to what should not included. Clay's amazing space colony simulator extraordinaire. My name is Twitchy, and we have been in the rock full of brains for about 195 cycles now, making our way into the future as calmly and as nicely as possible. I do have a little bit of an apology to make straight away. I, Twitchy, the guy making the recordings, are currently sat in one of the worst storms my country has seen for a little while. So if you hear wind howling away in the background somewhere, uh, I can do nothing but apologise. I don't have long to do the recordings, and so I'm going to have to get this done anyway. I'm going to try and no noise gate it out, but we'll, we'll see what happens. Today, today I have my eyes set on some cooling situations. As you can see, up down the bottom we're starting to get a little bit of warmth, but more importantly, at the very top here, we have lava. We have all the lava we have, could ever, ever need. And I need to try and cool this down so that we can make our way up and to the surface. And of course, try and make our way to this liquid sulfur geyser. With this liquid sulfur, we could actually feed the Sweetles. But that is a different thing that I want to do. I am actually going to try and start off by setting up a cooling system over here. We have an almost infinite water supply on this side. And we're starting to make... Oh yeah, that, that's right. They're starting to make ourselves a, uh, a nice farm and uh, oxygen system over here. And all of this is going to add to the heat. So we really, really need to cool this place down. I'm also going to throw in some hydroponic tiles so that we can get the irrigation going without the duplicates needing to get involved themselves. We, of course, on this second rock, Pyaxlin, have uh, Curie and somewhere, somewhere, we have Maxwell. Oh, he's over here doing the refine. Okay, that's that's interesting. I didn't realize that he was going to be doing that. That's fine, though. We're going to like burn through all the copper in the polar press, press because it gets hot over here. Anytime it goes above 75 degrees, we take some damage, and that is one of the other reasons why I want to get a cooling system down. I think the first place we're going to do it, though, the first place we're going to set it up is somewhere over here. I think I even might want to... Uh, let's, let's do this, shall we, and seal the water off. Uh, now, obviously... We're not going to be able to go through and do all of these, but I'm hoping that we can do a few of them and then we can get a cooling system set up under here. Oh, I'm not sure, actually. We've got a polluted water vent and the natural gas guys are down here. All of these things are going to be very awkward to try and work around. But you might be asking, how are we going to be doing the cooling system? Well, over here, yes, beautiful. We've got some research underway, and one of the researches that we've got is renewable energy. In the renewable energy, we get a steam turbine. Can we come into the power and have a look at it here? Steam turbine. We need a whole bunch of of refined uh, metals and plastic. Now, I, in particular, am going to need a bunch of steel as well. What we're going to do is we're going to take all of the heat uh, that we can get from around the bases by... Uh passing them through radiant passing some liquids through radiant liquid pipes to pick up the heat and then they are going to go to this thermal aqua tuner which will dump all the heat into oh look we need some steel that's what we're missing now uh dump all the heat into the some water which will turn into steam the steam turbine will turn it back into power and then water and uh, cooling happens uh, that, that may have been a few too many words there let's just get on and do it shall we Okay, let's start knocking out some of the things that are holding us back here. So as you can see, we've got the refined metal, 800 kilograms, over in the iron on the uh, the right-hand side here. We've got 5.9 tons. That is way over the 800 kilograms we need. The plastic, though, unfortunately, 200 kilograms. We've got a little bit under the... Uh, well, a little bit over 100 kilograms. I have pulled down the, uh, the plastic-producing beast over here. The main reason that I did that is because it was already over temperature. And if we carry on just putting uh, more... If we carry on repairing it... It, it, will, it will keep uh, climbing in temperature whereas if we rip it down as soon as I find where it is we should be able to then build a whole brand new one without too much troubles at some point when it when it when it gets done there's an interesting difference that I've just spotted between the two different types of, uh, of cooking equipment. So the micro musher just kind of gives you a rundown of the power, the heat, and the things that come, come out of it here. But the electric grill actually tells you the different foods that you can make here. That is crazy. Uh, well, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna be having some bristle berries here, uh, and so I think I'm gonna be cooking the gristle berry. I think that might be the thing we head towards. I mean, of course, there will be other things to head, head, head towards in the future. Ooh, words, they, they come out of me really. So until that happens, I think we're just going to set one of these up and, and see what we can get away with here. Of course, we don't have anyone even tending the farms yet, so that, that this might this might be over optimistic. Okay, here we go. Brand new polymer press going into place. The last one was at 75 degrees, and this one uh, is immediately going up. Is there a way of setting up some sort of automation system? Look, we can have a thermo sensor here. Uh, th that's the closest we can do it. So this takes up a 3x3 three three space. So if I put that there, uh, I then also, in the utilities, I think, want a temperature shift plate so that it can share the temperature between the two. Uh, if we then get some automation wire, of course, just iron, bringing down to there, we're going to set the, the, the thermometer up 
up to only set, let this thing run if it is below, uh, let's say, 60 degrees. Yeah, we're already getting very hot here, and it's not, not even been running for that long. Okay, let's see if uh, getting all of this done at the highest of priorities is going to mean that we can actually get some sort of control over this. I mean, that, that would be great. Look at the temperature dropping already on the polymer press just from turning it off. I think this should be fine. My real question is how well green signal if below, th the, I don't know, the below 40. Let's try it. I'm not sure about that because it's actually quite hot around here. But will the temperature shift plate share the temperature the way that I want it to? I mean, we're already up to 50 degrees here. I'm, I'm, I'm worried. Okay, let's have a look. We got 60 degrees on the polymer press and then the temperature shift plate is indeed sharing the temperature out. Okay, we're, we're going to go with this for now. Let's uh, take a... A few moments to sit and watch this. Yeah, okay, this is good. It goes up to 60 uh, and then it turns off and drops back down. Whether this is like doing any weird effects of not letting it process properly, maybe eating petroleum without producing uh, plastic, I don't know. Th these games get a bit weird sometimes, but hopefully this has got what we need. Okay, we have troubles over here. Uh, over on, so we were in Pyaxlin, and then I noticed that we've got a whole bunch of um, idle dupes over this side. And I was asking people to make another ranch, because whilst we've got quite a few ranches here, it's not enough to get exactly what we want. I think the first thing we might do, in fact, now that I've stopped to, uh, to stop and think about it, is start setting some shipping up. If we get some auto sweepers, I want one there, one there. Uh, then we want to have a conveyor chute over this side. And then I'm just going to dump everything over there. Now, in the future, in the future, we will be separating out the the coal and the the eggs because these are two things that are coming from. That, that's not how this works. You can't you can't do that like that. We need conveyor loaders. I, I have no idea why I went ahead and put the sweepers there. Okay, so with the conveyor loaders, hopefully we should be able to set them up to. Uh, except eggs and coal. Then everything gets dumped over here. Ideally, we would like the coal being dumped over this way, but until that future happens that we actually get some uh, filtration, let's have a look for the solid filtration. All the way down here. Look, look how far. We need to open up a whole another type of research before we can even start thinking about that, which is... Uh, it's in our future, but we need to get to space to be able to do it. It is uh, the the research is actually data processing, and the data comes from space. So uh, yeah, we're gonna have to hold tight for that one. But we, we'll do what we can for now. Now, basically, I need to get these eggs out of here because, as you can see, all of these hatch are what's called cramped at the moment, which brings their reproduction rate right down uh and at some point the hatch egg will hatch the it's the two hatches really confused me there for a moment uh and then put the number up over the maximum that we can have and someone will move the the hatches out to this holding area where there's basically just our food is kept these guys are the breeders this is where our food is but these guys have been slowed right down until we can actually change that so now in the future that we're in we should be able to get these conveyor loaders up and running uh, hopefully that's what franklin's on but she seems to be taking a while to do it Maybe it's time to also rethink our power. I'm just going to move this uh, this heavy watt spline up and across so that we could pull off power where we need it. These things are going to be quite a power drain on our system, and I don't want them to be using the same power that the research and food is using. Though I say that, it's totally what I'm going to do to start with. Curie Cut's currently suffering from heat stroke in the hot water. Okay, maybe we'll want to uh, decommission these builds at some point, but while she's going around, do you just breathing underwater these duplicate powers they they far surpass mine i mean she's nearly she's nearly done building let, let, let's let her finish up and then we shouldn't be dealing with the hot area in here anymore so steam turbine yes it's it's up and ready to go i'm just gonna slam it down there we're gonna knock uh, two holes through these tiles so that we can put a door down that might actually be a little bit low let's deconstruct that one and grab this one here in no 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 deconstruct that one and the one above it, that that's what I'm doing. I, I know what I'm doing, honestly. Okay, so this sets a set of stairs up this up to, uh, to the steam turbine that should be able to get built. There's a balm lily in our way. That's that's a little bit unfortunate. But then we can take the aqua tuner down here and just bam, pop it, pop it in place. There, there we go. This is almost almost entirely the uh, full. Ooh, I probably want to put that there as well. Almost entirely the full cooling system. We'll be running some pipes out and around to pick up heat from the base. Comes down this thermal aqua tuna, chills down the water, and in that and in that instance pushes the temperature into whatever is in the environment around here. We're going to have more water to be its environment to turn into steam, as I've said a couple of times now. 
Okay, this has been running for a little while now, and I've noticed that we've crept up from 60 to 65. I don't want to hit 75, so I'm going to bring us down another 5 degrees on the ambient temperature. Whether we actually get down there is another question entirely, because the whole area around us is, uh, is warmer than 35 degrees. But we'll see what we can do. That's why we're building a cooling system, right? Water is free! That's alright, there's no, there's no big problems there. Uh, would have been nice if we could actually get it in as the coolant, but uh, I, I think we're just going to be mopping most of what we're doing here. Body temperature is too high, too low, too high. Okay, another reason why we need this cooling system up and running. Okay, so we have this conveyor loader and auto sweeper now set up here. At some point this, uh, this shine smooth hatch needs to be moved, but I want to change. As you can see, all of these guys are set to, uh, to cramped at the moment. There's no egg in here though. Why? What? Is it because this guy hasn't been moved? Is, is that actually it? Let's look down here. Yeah, it, it, it's that reason. Okay, that that will be taken care of at some point, hopefully. But more importantly, in here, I want to come to the critter eggs. Where are we? Critter egg there. And I want to go hatch leg, a smooth hatch egg, stone hatch egg. All of these should then be picked. Oh, we got a problem. Oh, we got a problem. That can reach through the door to pick up the things that we okay all right that's that's not gonna work let's let's put that over there let's deconstruct that let's uh move the conveyor out something to watch out for auto sweepers they can go through the doors okay that's that's a thing okay so this one little section here has been sorted out as you can see there's no extra hatch in here and there are no eggs leaving all of these stone hatches to just be tamed groomed and happy with no cramp over this side though we got glum we got cramp we got all sorts of problems over here so if i come over i'm just gonna click all the critter eggs and let's see if that almost instantly we've got to wait for it to leave the area okay i wonder whether this actually affects the people the uh, hatches in here turns out no and now they're just glum because for some reason we we've not got people coming through to to do the, the grooming station but that should did you really just lay an egg straight there right in front of me how dare you but now it gets moved all the way over to here uh and we won't have any downtime now that's that's the main thing that we've been trying to sort out is to get rid of the downtime on the breeding cycles here uh this is great this is wonderful Okay, I, back on uh, Pyaxlin, now to need to partake in a little bit of an activity that I really, I don't enjoy. I, I feel like there are better ways of doing this. Uh, I just... I'm not very good at the, the other ways of doing this. So we're going to set up something called a water lock. Uh, we're going to put a whole bunch of water in this tiny little space here to stop the flow of gases coming back and forth. The main reason we're doing that is because I want this place to be completely clear of any gases that are not steam. Uh, so I'm going to have to set up a, a pump to get everything out of here. Uh, I've also been going through and slowly setting up... Let's get the liquid one, actually. Do we have the thermo sensor? Beautiful. And setting up all the automation for the cooling system here as well. We don't want the thermal aqua tuner freezing the water that's in the pipes, and we don't want the steam turbine turning on until the steam is warm enough to get a nice and efficient power generation. Okay, the liquids have been dropped into place by Maxwell here. This is good. We're just going to make sure that the seal is going to be permanent around. And then I've got a gas pump set up to try and take all the gases out of here. We're going to have to leave most of this set up as at any point Curie could walk, wander on in here and breathe out a whole bunch of carbon dioxide, destroying my vacuum. So we're going to see what we can do, but this, this should be fine. We do have some power up here. I'm not sure how close to overloading this power we, we are. But just for the sake of getting this pumped out, we're going to do that. All right, beautiful. We'll set up a secondary power system for this. I don't think it's going to be able to power itself, so we might end up having to use the natural gas geyser down here. Okay, we are pumping gases out of here. This is great. Okay, they're all coming across to this side. Uh, hopefully, we're not going to become over pressure at any point, though. There we go. We've got gas, gas vent over pressure. Uh, ooh, let's see what happens when this one gets built. I'm worried that the water will flow too far. Okay, that's, that's fine. That's fine. We've got a little bit of a carbon dioxide trap there. Hopefully, the chlorine will just pull it all out. Now, as you can see, we've got water here and water here. This means that there are no gases can be passed through. I would have preferred to have a little bit of water here as well, but I think we're fine for now. Yeah, yeah, okay, this, this, is, this is good. Maybe we actually wanted to have set up the water lock on the side because the only way we're going to be able to close this up is if someone stands in the water. Okay, we might have some problems here, but I, th I, think, I think we'll be fine. Okay, we're down to micrograms of carbon dioxide, micrograms of chlorine. This is 
is good. At any point, the carbon dioxide might spike back up again as uh, Curie breathes out, but that, that's fine, that's fine. The pump will take care of that, which should mean at some point we can have an entirely steam atmosphere in here. That's great. Oh, oh, there we go. There we go. It's happening. We've run out of any gases over here. Oh, the carbon dioxide just spread past when the uh, the pump got turned off. But we're down into double digits. That that's fine. That's that's very low, very low. Also, we're now on MC grams, uh, micrograms, not milligrams. I, I I never know which way round it goes. Are these the are these the micrograms? Are these the milligrams? Who knows? Micro is smaller than milli. I I, I should know this. I'm a physicist. Actually, more importantly, I'm I'm an astrophysicist. If you want to know the difference between a mega and a giga and a tetra or whatever, I'm I'm down for that. But uh. Micro and milli, that's, that's in the wrong direction. <laughs> I notice we're pumping out a lot of carbon dioxide, but it's not going anywhere. Look, 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 all these tiny little gases of carbon dioxide are being pumped out, but there's no carbon dioxide coming out of the vent. This, this is interesting. Do we have a deletion mechanism here? Yeah, I think we have. Oh, it's just disappearing. One milligram, zero milligrams, question mark. Is it, is it going to completely go, or is that it? Is that, oh, there we go. That, that one's gone, and then these last two, oh. All right. Oh, yeah, that's that's cool. That's cool. Thank you. Achieve. One thing I'm going to have to do is we're getting a supply of meat down the bottom here that just is not being dealt with, despite the fact that we've got the barbecue set up and ready to go. And the problem with that, the problem that we've got with that is if I come over to Maxwell, no one is doing any uh, any cooking. So uh, I'm just going to just going to give him that straight point right there. Curie's not dealing so well with the stress, though. We, we might have to try and do something for her. This this whole place needs to be made like much nicer. This, this area is fine. The rest, ugh. Ah, but if, uh, sorry, Maxwell has got himself a new job, so we want to come along to the cooking and just put that up just, just a little bit, just so it happens faster. You know something I haven't done? I haven't told people not to eat raw meat. Uh, I, I know it seems like an obvious thing that they shouldn't be told to do, but uh, no, you, you can't eat raw meat, guys. Don't, don't do that. Wait wait for it to be turned into barbecue. Much nicer. Oh, a little bit worried that we we're about to let out some oxygen in there, but thankfully the bottom layer has filled up with water if we go to the liquid, so that that's, that's good. That's good. And then we've managed to get this sealed in. Uh, lacks electrical engineering. I didn't know that was something we needed. Skills. Who's, who who could get electrical engineering? Where even it? Oh man, it's here. Oh, I know who's got electrical engineering. Franklin. Maybe we're going to be sending her over this way at some point, but not for now. Curie's got most of it covered. I mean, we could... <sighs> Ooh. Morale needed six, morale four. No wonder. No wonder she's been having a bad time here. But whilst we watch Kira go around and install the cooling pipes for my cooling system, I want to take this moment right here and thank the people that are keeping the water in my personal cooling pipes. That's right, I would like to thank my Patreons. Scrolling up the screen right now, you should see a list of names, a list of people that have taken the time out of their day and the money out of their wallets to keep the lights on in the recording studio. Without the generous contributions of these peoples, I would not be able to find the three or four hours every week I need to keep this rather intensive series running. And for that, I would like to thank them from the very bottom of my being, as I have a lot of fun doing this and I would be very, very sad to have to stop. So thank you. Thank you so much, guys. So Curie has done an awesome job going around and doing all of the pipe work for all of the cooling system that we're going to need here. I do need to get this liquid bridge and start getting some liquids into the system. Where do we want to do that? I was kind of feeling like we could just jump across somewhere. This this what it is right here, I suppose. Okay, so that should then put it into the pipe network. It'll flow all the way around. Because the aqua tuner's not on at the moment, it will jump over this bridge so it won't lock up and go all the way picking up heat. Uh, I've put some plex some bits of uh, some bits of pipe have gone down as granite other bits have gone down of obsidian the obsidian is where I want to pick up the heat from the granite is just to kind of pass it around I could have done a whole bunch of insulated pipe but uh, there's the minus decor to be considered there and I don't want that but with Curie putting in this last liquid bridge I feel like she's done all that she can do for the cause I am gonna take up uh, come over here and tell her to get into the teleporter we're gonna send her back so Maxwell is going to be on his own but uh, not not for long not for long we need to send someone across someone who can build this steam turbine are we going to teleport i think we're gonna teleport with her right beautiful uh, i want to come up to this transmitter and go franklin if you could please also curie's then going to get started on all of this and we're going to get another uh, another ranch up and running and have a whole bunch more meat because we, we don't seem to be building up no we've got 400 kilos of barbecue but it never hangs around we never have it for that long 
Okay, Franklin inside the device. We want to teleport her. We need to go and build that steam turbine. There will still be things that we need to just build over there, but I feel like Franklin should be able to take care of that. The problem that we have got, if I come up to the skills over here, Franklin, she needs a morale of 9. She currently has 13. That's because she has access to a whole bunch of stuff back on the original Home Rock. Uh, Curie had 6 and was uh, still struggling with the morale. So uh, we'll see how this works out. Let's follow Franklin around. She's going to generate some power. I mean, yeah, okay. And some more power to be generated. This, this is not how I wanted it to go. Okay, second day of her coming across and doing different jobs. I think we're going to have to get an alarm going just to get her pointed at the right positions here. This, of course, will bring her across to the steam turbine. And that should actually be everything we need to get this up and running. I'm trying to decide whether I want to rip down the gas pipe before I... Yeah, I'm, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that first. We're definitely going to have to come up with a better power system for over here. Franklin getting caught in a loop downtime. Ah, uh, I mean, I was going to show you guys what could happen over here. If I get this uh, conductive wire and pass it up, the thermal aqua tuna is going to take the water that is going through about 40 degrees and it's going to extract almost exactly 14 degrees Celsius out of it. I think it is actually exactly 14 degrees Celsius. But unfortunately, as you can see, the steam, the steam starts flowing and we need to fill this in to start stopping it moving around uh, i'm gonna actually put it in at the uh the alarm level here i have a quick look at the materials overlay yes the whole area has filled up with steam now but they're not that much but it's enough to worry about of course i have a plan for there not being that much steam i'm gonna grab a liquid pipe and i'm also gonna then throw it on to this pump here we're gonna throw in a couple of hundred kilograms of water to turn into steam or well, is maxwell coming out i'm not sure who's actually going to be filling this in but uh, someone should, and then the other person should definitely come along for this bridge. I'm also going to have to rip down the bridge at some point. I'm not sure how much, how many kilograms of steam we want in here, but it's uh, it's going to be on order of 100 grams per tile. Small problem where we didn't have enough steam in there to carry the heat away from the aqua tuna fast enough, and we're getting a little bit of an overheat. Thankfully, we're now dropping liquids in there. There we go. Beautiful. All right, made a mess really. Ah. Oh. Uh, that's that's the problem with using an alarm to get everyone to do stuff. Occasionally, things get uh, left to the wayside. Okay, that's uh, hundreds of grams. Do I just? We'll, we'll probably go with this. There's about 100 kilograms on each tile down below. This this seems fine. We'll deconstruct this now and see if we. Uh, have a working system okay let's try this again hook up the power and see if this can keep it going of course we're gonna like eat through all the power in this system pretty quickly but we're trying to bring the temperature of the water down it's going around at a 20 and it's coming back in at 30 this sort of area is what we're trying to cool down 30 degrees even though it's like 38 around the outside we're trying to bring this thermo sensor down to 35 in particular but we also want to bring the the temperature of this area down. I mean, I kind of wanted to have cooled the water down as well, but you know, what gen gentle single baby step. Okay, so we don't have a lot of power for this system. Every time I run it, you can see the battery gets drained almost instantly. And if I let it run for too long, the uh, the oxygen system can't power itself anymore. And this is a big, big problem. Uh, rather than try and solve my power issues like 25 minutes into an episode, I think what I'm going to do is just kind of scale back what I'm trying to cool down here. I want to just get these bristle blossoms uh, growing. I mean, I also want to turn this into steam, but I think that's going to have to wait for more power. Okay, pipe built. Let's try and break this here and send that around in two different directions. Hopefully this will just... Hold up. I'm not sure how this is going to do. Maybe I'll have to cut this pipe at some point so it doesn't just completely freeze. As in, like, lock up, not, not freeze solid. Uh, and now, hopefully, we can add some power to this and we can get this down to a low temperature. Well, Franklin's been giving it all she's got on the little hamster wheel over here, but we've finally started to get some water through that doesn't need to go through the aqua tuna and can come around the other way. This means that we're going to have a stable thermal situation shortly and hopefully shouldn't need to pull too much power anymore. I mean, we can hope, right? We can hope. 
Okay, cooling was happening, but not quite fast enough for my taste, so I've put some radiant pipe in here. These are made out of refined iron. They have a brilliant ra uh, radiance, as you can tell by the name. This means that, that they have a... Um uh, thermal conductivity are really high. It passes temperature back and forth between it and the gases really, really well. Still, wet. there we go. Oh, uh, instantly, as we were watching it, it got got itself into the body temperature range. Okay, that's nice. What about this guy over here? He's working on it. It's getting there. It's, get, it's getting there. And so the heat that has been taken out of this farmland has been gone and put into the water that we had under here. It's turned all into steam. At some point, it'll reach 200 degrees and then this steam turbine will start taking the temperature out of here, dumping water back into the system and uh, producing a bunch of power for us. But we are a little bit little bit uh, power choked so I will see you guys next time when we're going to take care of that I'm wondering whether we can have a little bit of a uh, petroleum generator over this way we've got slicks so we can feed the outputs too and of course we do have a whole bunch of cooling happening if we've got the appropriate amount of power being made but I will see you then or oh, when we're going to do that bye Should probably send Franklin home as well. She's um getting quite stressed.